Very warm welcome to you as you join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Olumu Iwa Matuloko. The month of December 2011 is now split right in the middle. By God's special grace, we'll be here to witness 2012. Last episode, we began sharing with you the proceedings of the Stakeholder Summit organized by the Federal Revenue Service for taxation stakeholders in the Lagos region of its operations. Because of time constraints, we couldn't do much, but we did have enough time for the Executive Chairman to give a rundown of what the FRS has been up to in the last one year since the last Stakeholder Summit was held at the same venue. We also gave room to Chief J.B. Okele, past president of the CITN, to talk on behalf of other stakeholders. Today, we are going to begin with the question and answer session in the hope that those questions and the answers given to them will adequately address your own concerns. Once again, the program is Tax Matters, and I'm Olumu Iwa Matuluko. Uh, the issue we, I want to clarify today is on withholding tax on dividend. Since the introduction of tax identification number, we have been having a lot of challenges for our registrar to process the deduction of withholding tax on a dividend due to limited liabilities company. The other year that we have to refer to the inland revenue on this, it took months for them to say they created a tax identification number for all the uh, names that we submitted. We have sent circular around, even in the AGMs, to all shareholders to supply their team, but their response is very, very poor. But since we know that uh, we told the tax on dividend is final tax on that dividend, they don't, I don't think they, they, they don't really need the we told the tax credit note. As I'm sp speaking now, the we told the tax on the last dividend we declare, we are still having challenges because some of the names on the list we don't have team for, and the bank are saying they can't process without team number. So I want to know how we can go about this. We have some we told the tax credits. Um, paid by our customers to FRS, but they used, some of them erroneously used their own tax identification numbers. Now, it's, okay, now they released the credit notes to us and said it's ours, but on the credit notes it's written our customer's name. Taking it to FRS, explaining that the customer said it's for total, they refused to grant us, saying that the A, into the pay direct, or rather into the software, it is that customer's name that is there, and so it cannot grant us the credit. So I just want to ask, is how do we move forward from this point? Because our money is trapped. Thank you. Okay, I'm more concerned about um, some tax policies currently um, put in place. For example, in the oil and gas sector, um, we say um, that taxes will be 2% of your turnover, minimum tax, 2% of turnover. Um, the issue is that um, in the light of current business trends in Nigeria, this will impact significantly on companies, their continuity. For me, that figure is sort of like arbitrary. It might mean that a lot of companies will end up using their capital to pay taxes, because it's not feasible. So I like the FRS to this. The other part is on the issue of um, VAT. Um, most companies won't pay VAT in this part of the world. And eventually, companies like companies end up bearing um, those, those parts. What I see is that the IFRS is not in any way willing to assist companies or even look at their own plight. The IFRS one comes and says, I don't care if your customer paid VAT or not. Ask that like, your payers that VAT. And the fact is, is, we go through a lot in trying to get those VAT, VAT from those companies, but they refuse to pay. We can't stop business. If we look at this thing um, in all ways, it has great impact on the economy because eventually you many companies will end up closing up because one, it's like asking them not to do business because they can't, customers are will, not willing to pay back. You're either saying shut down your business or just find a way to pay off, either from your capital or from, from whatever. Recently, um, there was a circular directive that all companies now deduct VAT at source. We at Forte Oil, we deduct at source and we do the normal work we used to do before. But then our vendors are asking, 
when are we going to have like a VAT certificate to show that this has been deducted as source? And whilst we appreciate the um, withholding tax credits being issued faster than it used to be, could we request that? Could we have it just one month after we remit? I mean, if I remit my tax on the 21st of November, could we get to a position whereby 21st of December I have the withholding tax credit? So, I mean, because this is cash flow for companies. Thank you. We need to see uh, clarification on public loan, what constitutes public loan. Because uh, when we got this special memo, dated March 26, signed by President Woodrow Jonathan, in his capacity as a president, we are in accepted uh, or extended waivers to interest in on government securities. But to our surprise, when we file our assess assessment, we got notice from FRS that what we claim on treasury is will not be accepted. And the fact that the signal for investment in treasury because of this task will that's why banks moved heavily and invested their funds. Now, what we are hearing is that the interest we earned on treasuries will not be accepted for tax. So I need clarification on that. If we've been accepting um, bonds, why not extend to treasuries? That's number one. Number two is this section 19 that talks on total profit. Now, where are your total profit, where there's no total profit, or where total profit is less than the dividend declared, that we will be subject to pay the differential in tax. The question we are asking is this. If you have exempted certain part of uh, our income, definitely that will impact what total profit will be. That means, in, 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 in inference, what we are doing is, what you have exempted on one hand, we are getting it through the dividend we are declaring. So it also has counter uh, measures on our investors. So the third point, you in, said in one of your heart that when we grant loans to manufacturers for export purposes, that interest that we earn is exempted. But subject to producing as, <laughs> this uh, export certificate, since I started my own practice or working in the bank, I've not seen one. And when your uh, team members come for inspection or audit or investigation, they kept on asking us to produce this certificate. And the question we tell them or ask is that, can you show us a copy of this export certificate? So we are being denied and we are financing for export. Now, this little one is in respect of this VAT certificate. In the past, when you file in your registration, a, business, a company name, and you pay all to be paid, the VAT certificate is issued to you. But now, we are finding it very difficult because many of my clients, when we go to the Federal Revenue Service, pay everything payable, satisfy all requirements, and the tax clearance is issued. The only bottleneck there is the fast certificate. There were very many questions and observations because it was indeed a robust session. And the FRS team, led by the executive chairman, rose up to the occasion. So before you lose track of the issues already raised, let us take some of the answers. And after that, if time permits, we'll take more questions and then more answers. The, the, the comments that a lot of withholding tax payments or remittances are not going through our platform uh, for the reason that some of the shareholders they are dealing with do not have tin. I mean, this is a common occurrence since we started this electronic payment system. Um, it's not peculiar to your shareholders. The same thing is happening when MDAs are making payment on behalf of contractors and we have always uh, gone around it somehow 
I think what I will advise you is if the banks cannot help you because there are occasions when you go through the banks and the bank will come to FRS, present the problem, and we're able to assist you to generate steam for those corporate shareholders. At times, too, we advise you to go to our nearest offices. You must take some steps yourself. And when you're doing business with your customers, you have a duty to also remind them to give you their tin. It's, it's a collaboration. So please, you need to also help us. When you're doing business with any customer, insist that they give you their tin. That is the starting point. Because when it comes to the point of payment and you do not have tin, there's no way it will go through the platform. There was a comment on companies are forced to pay for VAT, where the trader, the seller, had reflected VAT on the invoice and the customer just refuses to pay. That again is strange. You are the trader. Under the law, you have a responsibility to reflect VAT on your invoice and collect from the customer. So if you reflect it, and he refuses to pay on account of the fact that it has increased the price and they would rather opt to go elsewhere. Perhaps the, uh, I mean, the, what do you call them, the micro businesses that are not charging that. And after all, the good is the same. What you need to do is to let Inland Revenue know those kind of traders around you that are not charging VAT. You don't keep quiet. Because it, your, your, your product no longer becomes competitive. Uh, let's see. I, see, I see there's some murmuring. <laughs> uh, let, let us understand the murmuring. Is it in agreement or what, what is the murmuring for? Yes. Let's give him a mic. So that this is an interactive session. Yes. These people are traders and they are ready to pay their taxes but the problem is you are leaving them what they cannot what they will not be able to pay mr a b c d are selling the same let's say um spare parts these people are selling in the same market environment and somebody who wants to go and buy let's say buy room, and you see, I am a trader. This person is a trader. He's selling his barrel 10 naira. The other person says, No, I, you will buy the barrel and you pay 5 naira on top of it. Definitely, I cannot go and buy the barrel at the person who is selling plus 5 naira. I will buy from the other person who is very close to me at 10 naira. So, what we are really saying is that since VAT is an input output, and these people are selling within the same environment. FIRS should consider that they don't pay and customers will tell you they don't want to pay. They rather go to the area where they will buy at a very lower and economic rate. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thanks so much for that. But it still doesn't deviate from what I've said. In that market, and there are other retailers that are not incorporated. So the preference will be to drift towards the retailers because they are not charging VAT. And the reason is our VAT system has no threshold as obtained in other countries. You know when VAT started in the early 90s, the retailers were excluded, but not the limited liability companies that are known to have a place of business and are doing big business. So that's why I, I told you earlier on that these are matters we can take back to discuss. The, the, the tax policy department, I think one of the good things they are doing now is to give us a VAT law that will satisfy all sectors of the economy. It will come with a threshold. So up front, a taxpayer knows that he is not operating under the VAT system. Simply put, 
the problem arises in a situation where Mr. A goes to the market to buy a product, let's say a TV set. If he goes to the open market, most of them do not add 5% VAT as required by law. But once Mr. A goes into a mega store, 5% VAT will be added, in which case the price of that TV set will be higher or supposedly higher. What Mr. Ogbeson is asking those sellers who obey the law to do is to report their neighbors who don't. And that gave rise to the murmurings. What is the solution? The Federal Inland Revenue Service has a duty to go into the markets and enforce the law across board. Or amend the law. Period. On this matter, we are on the side of the taxpayer. Now from Federal Inland Revenue Service. Okay, what's your problem? Uh, madam, have you received your receipt booklet when you take your money? Receipt booklet? Yes, madam. Madam, now where you they write your VAT? Okay, oh VAT, they the amount we they for the receipt. Madam, it they very wrong to write VAT inclusive. Okay, now where you they write down? The right thing to do is say you go write the amount for the VAT. We be say we will fix them separately. My business people, them. Make una make sure say una write the amount of money where una customer pay for goods for una receipt. Make una also write the money for VAT for receipt separately. Federal Inland Revenue Service say it they wrong to write VAT inclusive for una receipt. If una not do as we talk so, court fit ask una to pay half the money the people buy goods from una to government. Or you go go jail or even self. The two join together. This message now from Federal Inland Revenue Service. More responses. Now, there, there was also a comment on withholding that deduction in favor of contract employers. For one reason or the other, you use the TIN number of the contract employer. And the flu line receipt we are using in the office printed out a credit note which gave credit to the contract employer rather than the contractor. You now take that same credit note to the tax office and you want to enjoy the benefits of that credit amount. And the tax officer says, no, this is not in your name. You can't get it, isn't it? Okay. There is a problem there. And again, it's tied to not using the right TIN number related to the name of the beneficiary. But where that happens, you... I will expect that you will write to the tax controller in charge, who in turn will probably refer it to headquarters because it's not something he can handle on his own. That's why the matter was referred to the SSG, because we have a circle on how such matters should be treated. Still on the issuance of returning tax credit notes in favor of wrong beneficiaries? First and foremost, let me urge the taxpayers to ensure that they have tin because that tin is very important. Two, when you go to make payment, ensure that you are making the correct payment because if you don't check, maybe you are paying for a company income tax, it will be captured as value added tax payment and that will delay you from getting the value because we have to start process of refund and so on. So make sure when you pay you check and did the correct payment captured by the bank. Two, if you make a mistake of posting, you can ask for refund or adjustments, which uh, the Act empowers Ella Revenue now to refund. We get the money from the Accountant General, we process and see if you qualify for the refund, then we refund uh, you the tax due to you. But if it is wrong posting, we do adjustments with the Accountant General and Ella Revenue. But please, and please, if you are doing business with any government agency, 
ensure that you have TIN, you have valid tax clearance certificate. Because without that TIN, one way was hold and we want to remit, the money will get hung in a bank. We may, you may not be able to get value for what is was held from your payments. Now, on companies not being issued with VAT certificates on registration, you know, when we started VAT, it was mandatory that you will get a VAT certificate which you will display in the place of business so that everyone paying VAT to you will know that, yeah, you will collect and remit. But we found out that Majority of the people asking for VAT certificates are contractors seeking for one contract or the other. You give them the certificate, yes, minus the big construction companies. These other ones don't have anywhere to even display it. And in the early part of 90s, yes, you have to produce that VAT certificate before the person giving you the contract will even pass on the VAT to you. Then 1995, we came out with an amendment to the law which gives the responsibility for VAT remittances to the contract employer. In which case, you don't need that certificate anymore. The contract employer will ordinarily, through this reverse charge, he will hold back the amount and pay over to FRS. Then 1995, 2006, we came out with TIN, tax identification number. Once you have that TIN, you are automatically registered for all taxes. Perhaps there's some wisdom in still demanding for VAT certificates. But to me, with the exception of supermarket stores and hotels, those that still deal with customers I don't think you need it. But for me, I think it's just to minimize cost of administration. When something is not required by you anymore, and it's just kept in your suitcase, why do you carry a document you don't need? That thing you have is sufficient. I think that was what was at the back of our mind when we recommended to management that we should harmonize both TIN and your VAT registration numbers together. On section 19 of CETA, where we, we assume your total profit, where dividend is, is being paid, and we take the amount of dividend as total profit, you know, it's a, it's, it's a feature of the law. I mean, even FRS, the study group itself recommended in, in 2002 that it should be expunged from the law. But we still have it there today. It's not something FRS can do on its own. Let's just understand that the power we don't have, we cannot exercise it. Export grant certificates too is a matter of the law. We can't change anything. But we welcome your suggestion. On acceptance certificate, yes, it's in the law. So there's nothing the officer has asked for that is outside the law. But whether that law should apply in these current times is the issue. And it was for that reason we, the circular, like you said, was issued. We'll find out. Um, stating that where the company can produce invoices evidencing purchase, that should suffice. But you know people can also cook up all these invoices. They do. And we've seen instances where officers went out on audit and discovered that the value disclosed in the acceptance certificate was far, far higher than the amount of assets the company itself is claiming. Oh, we told the tax credit not to be issued one month after date of remittance. If I one month is too long, with ICT, it's a matter of 
days, one, two days after your payment. I know it's not happening now, but that's our dream point. It is on that optimistic note that we draw the curtains on today's episode of Tax Matter. It's been feedback time, and we do hope that you have been better enlightened and better informed. We want to thank you for watching. Merry Christmas in advance, and Happy New Year in advance.